Sean Carlock, welcome to another volume of Send It. Now, here at Defensive Edge, we test gear and bullets and different things for long range hunting all the time. But it's not very often that we write full reviews on just a piece of gear. Usually, most of our recommendations along those lines come across in as we're teaching you a technique or talking about something. Hey, by the way, we use this and we use this. Every once in a while, we run across a piece of gear that is worthy of having a full-on review done. Today I want to run you through our field testing of the SIG Kilo 10K laser range finding binocular. Now before I start into all the particulars of the 10K range finder here, I just want to let you guys know this is not something that SIG sent us and said, here, test out our gear. And while well, that happens to us, and we do do that on occasion, the deal here was, is I was prepared to lay down big money on a Vectronics PLRF25 probably a year and a half ago for our long-range military classes. I'd had an opportunity to use one of those, and it was an outstanding unit at the time, but let's face it, they're ten grand. So, before I laid down that kind of money, I was fortunate enough to hear some rumblings that SIG was making a laser range-finding binocular with big distance capability, so I held my water until they were available. A few details trickled in between then and when we actually got the unit, which was just recently, but I'm glad I waited. So let's look, th look this thing over. First of all, it's very simple to use. You have to have your phone, and you've got two buttons on the unit. You set up the SIG BDX program in your phone, you put your ballistic profile on it, and then you Bluetooth it over to the rangefinder. That was all pretty easily accomplished. In the past, I've had some connectivity issues and some communication issues between your phone and the devices. That was not the case with this. It was all very easy and painless. First and foremost, I bought this unit for its laser rangefinding capabilities. And to be quite honest with you, at uh, MSRP of $2,000 or so, I didn't even care about anything else. If it would range half the advertised distance, and that's been my experience, if you want a rangefinder to work out in the field to 1,000 yards, you better get a 2,000-yard rangefinder. And that holds pretty consistent. I mean, I don't really care what the ranging capabilities on a big reflective target are, I use stuff in the field. I don't use them on big reflective targets. So with that in mind, the first thing I did when we got this thing running, got the battery in it, and got everything set up internally inside, was to go out and see what it was capable of. Honestly, anything inside of 4,000 yards, easy. Easy ranging for the most part, especially if you have it hooked to a tripod. So you could range trees and brush and rocks and grass and rock faces. 35, 36, 3800 yards piece of cake. Just wasn't a big task for it. Even in bright sunlight, which is something we didn't have in terms of capabilities prior, was that ability to range all day long in any kind of condition, much past about 22 to 2500 yards. This is a significant step forward for us. Okay, now as you can see, when you pull up the BDX program that on your phone, and you have to download this, that this is what comes up on your main page. And this isn't a big in-depth how-to uh, send-it volume. This is really just a review about the gear. So we're not going to go into all the nuts and bolts of enter this, this is how we do this, then you do this. It's not going to be like that. We mostly just wanted to tell you about the features and tell you why we liked what we liked and any issues that we ran into. So when you get into the BDX profile, you hit custom profiles. I already have one entered here. 
This is all you have to enter. There's one page and you're going to fill out these things and it takes about 35 seconds to put all that stuff in there and you save it to your library. You can put several guns on there. I think you can put like 20 guns on there and then you Bluetooth it to the rangefinder and load them all up. It is that simple to use. Now once you've done that you're done with this. There's no more messing around with this except to do a little validation work in terms of do you need to tweak your velocity to make it actually match what's going on, etc. Very simple to use. Now once we've run out the BDX program and got it loaded onto the rangefinder, which like I said was very simple, everything else happens at the rangefinder. Inside the rangefinder are several sensors. They will read temperature. They will read pressure, they will read humidity. The rangefinder has an inclinometer so it will read the angle of the shot you're shooting. It has an electronic compass in it which you have to calibrate which takes about 10 seconds and is easy to do. You do that by scrolling through the mode mode, excuse me, the mode button on the rangefinder and using the fire button to execute. Very simple to do. You get all that taken care of and the rangefinder also has a magnometer to read your latitude which allows the AB software that's loaded in the rangefinder to calibrate and run Coriolis and Spindrift and give you legit corrections to any distance the rangefinder will range. This is a big step forward for us. There's several rangefinders out on the market and have been for years that will give you a ballistic solution, but they were all limited because they did not have functions for correcting for Spindrift and Coriolis. So realistically, unless you were going to fudge and add those things in yourself, you were limited to that 1,000, 1,200 yard mark at best. Okay, so we covered things of it importance in the order they were important to us. First and foremost we wanted laser range finding capabilities. The second thing we wanted was a ballistic calculator built on board that would take care of all of our needs out to some pretty big distances. The next thing that we looked at was hey we want a decent piece of glass right? Although that is a lot lower on the spectrum than anything. Now the glass in this is pretty good. Now you'd be kidding yourself if you think you're looking through a pair of $3,000 Swarovski binoculars. Just not going to be quite the same. Some people have complained that there's a little tiny bit of a blue tint to the color and honestly I didn't see that so much or maybe more importantly I just didn't care. You have individual eye focusing diopters and then you can do the overall course focus the ability to focus, no matter how different your eyes are, is almost unlimited here. Very easy to get a good, crisp, sharp picture out of this. If it has a little tiny bit of color abbreviation, um, like I said, as long as everything's crisp and clear and I can use it to spot, I just don't care if there's a little bit of tint to it one way or the other. And like I said, it was so insignificant, it just didn't make any difference to me. One of the other features we really wanted was to have the ability to hook our device to a tripod. I mean, that's a game changer for long distance ranging, and it's a game changer for spotting animals for long periods of time behind the glass so that you just don't get fatigued out and have to spend less time on the glass. So, for those that have already asked, um, we use the Sportsman's Adapter for the Swarovski binoculars, and the standard low mount for them. And this worked really great. Made it right up on our RRS tripod with the little base plate on it and quite happy with that setup. Very quick to get in and out of there. Super steady. Allows you to rotate the binoculars around a little bit and uh, that's just a good setup. Now, a couple of issues that we weren't maybe so hot on. 
At first, when I picked the, the unit up, I thought, boy, these are, these are kind of weighty for a pair of binoculars. Well, that's true, they are. But it's not just a pair of binoculars. It's a pair of binoculars, it's a rangefinder, it's a ballistic app, it's a Kestrel, all rolled into one. So, you've got all those functions here. Yeah, it's going to weigh a little bit more. So, I took my Kestrel, I took my binoculars, I took my phone with my ballistic app on it, and then I took a rangefinder and I weighed all those things, the stuff we've been using, and they weighed almost a pound more than this unit. So in that term, you're saving a pound out of your backpack, so to speak, by having all this in one unit. And since I'm going to use it on a tripod most of the time, that wasn't such a big issue. Now, on the idea of cost, this was a big bonus. At $2,000, you can't touch being able to buy a Kestrel weather station, a rangefinder, a pair of binoculars, and then a laser rangefinder on top of that that's worth having. So at $2,000, even though that's a chunk of change still, this is quite a deal to the person that's new to long range shooting hunting. It'd be pretty tough not to be able to sell you on buy this one piece of gear and you're pretty much done. Certainly a good place to get started. You may decide like I did that, hey, I want to carry my Kestrel as a backup just in case because I already have one. But you could easily get by with buying this and nothing else. Okay, so when it gets right down to it, I really only had one gripe about this whole setup. It's working really great for us and we'll show you some actual field footage where we're using it and show you just how well it worked for us here in a few minutes but the only thing that was advertised that I really felt like it didn't live up to and this isn't SIG's issue was the ability to use base maps that they and SIG paired with base maps on this project evidently to do this but the feature of being able to remotely locate a point with the rangefinder is a little misleading. You don't actually fire up base maps and hit the rangefinder and it puts a point on there. What you do is you fire up base maps, you range your target, you go to tools, you go to remote marker, and you enter in the yardage. So we'll enter in the yardage here and we'll just make us a random number. Let's say we range it 890 yards and then comes up this screen with a crosshair on it. You hold it up, you aim it at the target, and you hit the set button at the bottom. Okay, So this really isn't a function of the rangefinder so much as it's a function of base maps, and any rangefinder will do this. The problem is, is that the base maps app doesn't give you the right heading. I believe it's something to do with the difference between calibrating true north and the actual direction you're pointing. We consistently, no matter how many times we calibrated the compass and base maps, ended up off to the left about the same amount. So when you go to use this feature, which I was really excited about it when I was reading about it, boy it sounded like a great deal and it would be if base maps actually corrected it right. So Hopefully there's a patch coming out for this. They understand that that's going to be a problem and uh, they get that all squared away because it would be a neat feature for you for late evening recovery. You shoot something at last light. Boy, you can plot a good spot in there and hike to it in the dark. That'd be outstanding for us. But honestly, in playing around with this, I had better success in pulling up the map, driving over to where the target was from the aerial view and putting in the spot myself. When they get this corrected, and I'm sure they will, this will be a good feature. But as of right now, it's not so good, and it really isn't part of this whole deal, even though it sounds like that in the instructions and on the box. You know, you just you think you get this idea that, hey, I'm going to fire it up and pair these two together, and then I'm going to hit the laser rangefinder, and it's going to start putting points in. It doesn't work quite like that. Okay, so there's our key features, our likes, our dislikes, our dislikes are few, basically one, and that really is almost inconsequential 
given what I felt like was important in this unit. So I wanted ranging, I wanted ballistic application, and I wanted a pair of binoculars. I wanted it all in one unit. And most importantly, I wanted to not have to have any other gear. Boy, it fills the bill pretty well for that. So the next thing for us to do is actually get out in the field, do a little shooting, see how the ballistic calculator works for us. I have no doubt that it's going to work good. It's applied ballistics software in it. And boy, we've had really good luck with that over the years. So uh, I'm sure this will go well. But I really want to see if the sensors work and compare with our other gear, how they jive against each other, and if there's any issues that we run into when we get out into the field. Okay, Ty, we are 1176 yards. You need to come up 26 minutes even. Of 26. Wind, I got five miles an hour coming from the right. Let's go right, three and a quarter. Right, three and a quarter. Spotter's up. On it. Hold right edge. On it. Send it. Hit. Well, Tyler, that uh, that SIG 10K rangefinder is making this pretty easy for us. I'm liking it. The more we use it, the more I like that thing. Oh, yeah, it's making this really quick and painless. <laughs> right on. Let's go get some more. Okay, now that we're done with all of our field testing, let's just hit the high points here. Like I've already said early in the video, I had only one gripe, and that was the issue with base maps. Boy, everything else worked pretty well for us. The ballistic calculator works great. The rangefinder is awesome. Boy, we just didn't have trouble hitting targets off the tripod like houses, stuff that was reflective, uh, even rock faces, stuff we're normally using for targets. Five, almost 6,000 yards on those kind of targets. Ridiculously good performance here. The ballistic calculator, everything about that was really solid. Uh, the only issue there, and it's not an issue so much as it is something to be aware of, we found out, was that if you have the unit inside your vehicle where it's warm, say 65, 68 degrees inside your pickup, and you step outside and it's 35 or 38 degrees, it'll take the unit almost 20 minutes to get down to ambient temperature when you have that kind of variation. And that's not an issue so much as it's just something to be aware of. SIG was obviously aware of this because you can manually change the temperature in there. And it's quick and pretty easy to do. But to do that, you're going to have to have something to read the temperature. This is one of the reasons that I always feel like I should have a Kestrel in my pocket. They don't take up much room or real estate. And since I already have one, I always carry a backup for everything. So I carry the Kestrel as a backup. Or... You just make sure that, hey, I leave my, my SIG unit, my 10K, inside my backpack, in my binocular bag, in the back of the truck, where it's going to be at ambient temperature. But inside the backpack, it's not going to get wind chilled. It's not going to have these other temperature issues. And I'm going to be pretty good to go most any time I need it. So that isn't an issue for me. Just something for you to be aware of. Range finding capabilities were great. We talked about that. The ballistic calculator was great. Um, we had no issue. We had to validate it just like we do any other ballistic program. You throw in all your base numbers, and yes, they're pretty close. And we had to tweak the velocity a little bit, and bam, 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 we're hitting targets out to 1,200 and some change with just one little correction of the velocity that we did when we were at 400, 480 yards, we shot one little short target just to see if we were a little high, a little low, threw that correction on there, and bam, 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 out to distance. 
Coriolis Spindrift automatically corrected into our windage figure and was spot on. Really happy with this. Um, this is pretty much going to be our go-to piece of gear for the foreseeable future. And uh, it's possible somebody may come out with something that's even more advanced than that. But, boy, when you start looking at the amount of money it costs, what it does, and how well it does it, it's going to be pretty tough to beat. I think SIG's going to sell a lot of these things. So much for this episode of Send It. Check us out on our next episode of Send It when we use this to line up some big distance shots. Have a good day. Stay safe. Hunt hard.